What's going on engineers? This is part five of the Node.js basic series and in this video we're talking about promises. If you're coming here from the previous video on the event loop then you now know that Node.js style callbacks are just ugly and tough to work with. Promises is one of two ways to make working with callbacks easier and it makes your code easier to reason about. The second way is await and async and it's the very next video. So let's jump in and have a look. So basically what a promise is, is it's a construct that allows you to deal with an eventual value or an eventual error. So to do a promise, you do new promise and you give it a function as argument one. This function also has two functions as callbacks. It has a resolve function and it has a reject function. Inside this function, you could do anything you want. You could do something that was synchronous. You could do something that was asynchronous. It doesn't really matter. What does matter is that at some point you must call either resolve or reject. Now let's look a little lower in the code. You'll see that there is a dot then and a dot catch. And these are key to promises because the promise object must implement both these methods. And when you call dot then, it takes one function as an argument and it's going to contain the value that you resolve with. Conversely, the dot catch is also going to take one function as an argument but it's going to have the error that you reject with. So let's look at this in practice. If I run this code as is, you see that it says good. If I comment out the resolve and I uncomment the reject and I run it again, then unsurprisingly, it says bad instead of good. Now something very important happened here. When I called reject, it bypassed all of the dot thens and went straight for the dot catch. Conversely, just like reject ignores the dot then, resolve, as you saw, ignores the dot catch. The real power with the dot then comes in that you can chain them. So I can create, say, five of these. If you're already inside a dot then, you can return a value directly. So I could return one here, two here, three here, and four here. And each time I do that, it becomes the value for the next dot then. So in this case, the, the value of value here is good, and then it's one, and then it's two, and then it's three, and then there's no dot then for four, so that's just ignored. So if we run this, we see it does good, one, two, three. Now I just want to change resolve back to reject so I can reiterate something. So if I change it back to reject and I run it again, you can see all it says is bad. So it entirely ignored all of these. Basically, when you reject, it flows all the way down to the nearest dot catch. Now, what's really cool about the rejection is you can also throw errors. So in this case, this would resolve to this dot then. And if I throw the text really bad, then I run the code, you can see that it outputs really bad. So basically, I throw an error here. It flows all the way down to the nearest catch block, and then er becomes the value of whatever you threw. So it's kind of like a really fancy try catch block, except it's it's really flat. You're not creating these crazy callback, you know, nested callbacks. Now bear in mind that new promise, resolve, reject, and all this, this is only really necessary if you want to start a new promise. If you're using a library or something else that's already async in nature and implements promises, all you really got to do is just call that function. So like some async function. And then as long as that function returns a promise, you can call dot then on it. Another way to start a new promise is simply to do promise dot resolve and just give it null. That would actually work just fine. Null, one, two, three. And that's because it resolved null and it picks it up from then, so value became null. So let's recap a little bit. Basically, if you resolve a promise or use a library that returns a promise and there's no error, then it's going to go to the nearest dot then. If an error is thrown or something happened, then it goes to the nearest dot catch. So now let's look at a more practical example. So if you're coming from the last video, then you recognize our old friend read file. And remember, this is node style callbacks. So read file, argument one is the file path. Argument two is the callback. Callbacks are in the form of error, comma, data. So now what would this look like with promises? Well, it would look like this. So let's unpack what's happening here. So I create a new promise, I pass it a function, which has a resolve or reject function. 
and then I call fs.readfile just as I did above. Except inside the callback, I'm saying if there was an error, then reject with that error. If there is no error, then resolve the data. So just like in the last example, if I resolve, it's going to go to the nearest dot then, it's going to execute that code. If I reject it, it's going to go to the nearest dot catch and execute this code. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, why would I use this? This is like quadruple the amount of code. And you're right, it is more code, but it offers you one really, really great feature is it doesn't permanently indent you out to the right. Every time you use a node style callback, you are permanently pushed out to the right unless you use a bunch of other functions. This continuous callback pushing you out to the right is something in the industry called callback hell. And if you Google image callback hell, you'll, you'll see exactly what that is. I did it for you and I found this image. So of course this is a joke, but it's a, it's a very good example of, of callback hell. And this is exactly the type of thing that would be done synchronously. You know, the, the joke that's being made here is that you have floppy disks, you load the first disk, and then you're prompted for the second disk, and there's a callback. Once the user puts in the second disk, then it loads the second disk. There's a callback once that's done, and it prompts for the third disk. And it just keeps going and going and going and going and going. You know, once, once you're a couple levels deep, you're, you're no longer writing good readable code. Of course, this is just made up code because floppy is not a real Node.js module, but I took this and I converted it into what it would look like with promise style. And it would look like this. I, I require floppy just like he did. I load disk one. I get the data for disk one. I prompt for disk two. I load disk two. I get the data for disk two. I prompt for disk three. And I just keep doing that all the way down. And on disk six, you know, for the data, I have the same message that he put. So of the two of these, which is now more readable? Well, clearly it's this, because this took this callback hell, this crazy pyramid that it created, and it just flattened it. So you can go from this to this, and that's a pretty big upgrade. So now that you saw that, let's go back to our original file. So in this case, I'm only reading one file, but if I wanted to read more than one file, it would get a little messy. Before we look at what it looks like with multiple files, just, just by the way, this is not something you ever have to type. There's a there's a module called util, and in util there's a method called permissify, and it basically reduces all of that to this. So this right here is basically the equivalent of all of this. It just it takes a native node module and just wraps it up in a promise and lets you call dot then on it. Or if there's an error, it'll reject and flow to the nearest dot catch block. So this is really easy now, right? Read data1.txt, then data. And data will contain whatever the contents of data1.txt is. So now things are getting pretty good because that's a lot cleaner, and it's only, what, one or two lines of code extra? No problem, right? So now let's look at reading multiple files at once. Now we're going to start channeling the true power of promises. So in this first example, if you want to read one file and then a second file and then a third file, you basically have to do them in order. You read the first file, and then in the callback, you read the second file, and in that callback, you read the third file, and then you can do something with the three files. And at this point, you are now indented in a lot. So this is obviously ridiculous. Nobody writes like this in 2018. So now let's enter promises. So the first step is to use util.permissify to change read file into a promise and just assign it to the variable read. Now we're going to use this neat thing called promise.all. The purpose of promise.all is it can take an array of promises and just resolve all of them at once. What's cool about this is all three of those files are read in parallel. Whereas in the above example, it has to read one before it reads the second, before it reads the third. And that's just slow and inefficient. So in this case, it takes an array of promises. In this case, read data one, read data two, read data three. And then we got our dot then block. Data is an array with all the values. And then we simply unpack those into data one, data two, data three. So let's run it and check it out. So I, I got it twice. That's because the, the old version is the top and the new version is the bottom. But what you can see is they're both identical. This is exactly identical to this in result, except this is a lot easier to use. It's more efficient. And then right here, you could just, you can return a value and just go to the next then block and just keep going and going and going. 
Now the last thing I want to show you is a real live piece of code that I'm using on Engineer Man Knowledge Center which uses promises. You won't be able to run this because it accesses database things like that but I will describe to you how it works. So there's two parts to this. There's the promise returning function but then there's also the resolution handler. So the promise returning function is this database.challenges.find1. Find1 is a method in SQLize.js that returns a promise with the eventual value of the database object that you're requesting. So basically this is saying find one challenge where challenge ID equals whatever challenge ID they passed. And then challenge becomes the database object from the database. While not pictured here, I do have an error handler that you can't see in the code, but if something were to fail, it would flow to a dot catch block that I have and it would handle that error. So most of the time, this is what your code's gonna look like. You're gonna be using libraries that already return a promise anyways. So all you're going to do is call whatever method they're exposing and then call dot then on it. The only time you're really making manual promises is if you come across a library or a function that's async in nature that simply does not implement dot then, you know, or follow promises. Outside of that, you never have to do manual promises. And really, it's just community modules because you can use util permissify to change all the core modules into promise, you know, types. But I think you'll find that most, if not all, modern maintained community modules, they all are promise based. So let's do a promise recap. You can either create your own promise or you can use a library that returns a promise. And in both cases, you can call either dot then or dot catch on them. Dot then will let you do something with the resolved value. Dot catch will let you do something with the error. And whether that's rejected or thrown, it doesn't matter. When a promise is resolved, it bypasses the catch blocks and goes all the way to the nearest dot then. When a promise is rejected, it bypasses all the then blocks and goes to the nearest dot catch. And that's it for promises. The next video we're doing is async and await, which is a, another way to make callbacks a lot easier to reason about and a lot easier to write, but it's not a replacement for promises. In fact, async and await requires promises. It's, it's built upon them. I won't go into any more detail here. You can just watch the next video. But what I will say is that if you're coming from a more synchronous language like Ruby or Python or PHP, you're going to really love async and await. So that's it. As usual, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you on the next video.